Hello friends, welcome. Today we've got two quite difficult questions, I would say. Firstly, on bacterial growth requirements in an application question. And the last one is a suggest in which the examiner's report actually said that less than 150 candidates scored that mark. So are you up for the challenge? <laughs> Pause the video here, try these questions out and continue on and see how I answer them. Okay, so much is going on here. You might be like, what on earth do I do? I'm going to start overthinking. But don't worry, calm down, it's fine. Let's read the question, okay, before we read anything else. Use the information of figure 22 and your knowledge of bacterial growth requirements to provide support for students B, student B's conclusion. Here's what I would do. I would take a step back. I would rephrase it. So I need to use figure 22 and I need to use my own knowledge, okay? On bacterial growth requirements. Right, so what does that even mean? It means the, the things that bacteria need to grow. Okay, and what else does the question want from me? Oh, it wants me to support student B's conclusion, so back them up. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So now I'm actually going to read it, you know. I'm going to look at uh, figure 22. Hmm, huh. interesting. They're all hydrocarbons. They all have Carbon and hydrogen atoms only. Okay. Let's read it. So, the first two sentences are saying how crude oil is spilt and it's um, harmful. Then, the interesting part comes here. Some bacteria can break down the hydrocarbons in crude oil. Then it says the rate of hydrocarbon breakdown by bacteria can be increased by spraying the oil with detergent. Detergent breaks up oil oil into droplets, thereby increasing their surface area. Hmm. So we have the crude oil, right? Then we spray some detergent that breaks it up into droplets. That means that, you know, there's greater surface area. Okay. Student A, what do they say? They said the detergent sp sp speeded up um, the rate of hydrocarbon breakdown only because it increases surface area. Hmm. Student B said that, yeah, it also increased the growth of the bacteria population by an alternative mechanism. So the question is telling me and you back up student B's conclusion that, you know, this detergent actually helped the bacterial population grow. And the reason why I've taken my time to try and understand what's going on and rephrase it in my head is because this question, as I said, there's so much going on, right? So you don't want to just dive into it. You just want to stand back and see it for how it is. That's such a good tip even for any question, really. If you ever get stuck, just just calm down. <laughs> just um, sit back on your chair and look at for what it is. Here we have crude oil. Crude oil has been sprayed with detergent. Why so bacteria can take it up more easily? Student A is saying, yeah, it's just because of the increased surface area that bacteria can grow from it. But actually, student B is saying, do you know what? This detergent actually helped the bacterial population to grow. So the question really says, use the structures in figure 22 and what you've learned in class to talk about why this detergent has increased the growth of the bacterial population. Cool. So, let's consider figure 22. As I said before, they are hydrocarbons, so that means they only have carbon hydrogen atoms only. And now, my friends, please, for the love of God, state all the obvious points. Say it. Say that the fact that um, in figure, not 21, I meant 22, um, the structures contain only carbon and hydrogen. Okay, they did say use the information of figure 22, and we are doing that, and that is one mark, okay? What's the next thing we can talk about? Well, we can talk about, about the detergent, okay? Think about it, yeah? Think about it. If by adding the detergent, you know, it's increasing the bacteria population, well, that means it's their nutrients. It means that the bacteria has gained the nutrients from the detergent, and that's why it can grow, Okay? Then you can talk about how, you know, the bacteria needs nitrogen for amino acids and phosphates for ATP. What that 
point essentially means is that bacteria needs other elements, okay? Yeah, as I said before, bacteria can break down hydrocarbons, but the thing is, bacteria isn't just made up of carbon and hydrogen only, they need other elements. So you could have specified anything, you could have said oxygen for aerobic respiration, they need uh, nitrogen for amino acids, as I said, and phosphates for ATP. They need that, right? So that's why the detergent is so useful, is because that's where they can get the other elements from, because they can't get all of it from the crude oil. And the last point is that the absence of other elements is a limiting factor for bacterial growth. As I said before, they can't only grow from carbon and hydrogen, they need other elements. So that's why that last point, you can just say, you know, by not having the other elements, it's actually limiting the growth of the bacteria. Think about it this way, humans, right? We need calcium, we need phosphates, we need oxygen, we need all those elements. We can't just survive on, say, a nitrogen only, can we? Same with the bacteria, you know, they can't just survive with only two elements. So that's where that uh, sentence comes from. So for this question, really, just, just say how it is, you know. Say that, yeah, um, these are the elements that are in crude oil, and these are the potential elements in the detergent, and what are the consequences of it? Now, when we go on to the second uh, question, as I said, not many people got this. It says, suggest one piece of evidence that can further support student B's conclusion. Here's what I like to do, right? When questions are worded in this way, I like to think what would happen before and after a change. So student B, as I said, is saying that, yeah, the detergents increase the growth of the bacterial population, but what if, right? just grow the bacteria on like droplets with and without detergent. So you can see the effect with or without it. And that's really it. It's not that hard. You just need to think the before and after effects of it. And yeah, those are the two questions for today. Remember the two most important exam technique tips are read the question first and state all the obvious points. Now over to you. Try some questions and let me know how it goes.